Good morning, everybody. And welcome to Wake Up Missoula. My name is Noel Macboy. And I'm Scott Ramp. We yep. are your hosts for this morning, ushering you into the middle of the week. And um, <coughs> yesterday, there was a quite a little thunderstorm going on outside, which really affected our live cut-in of our uh, Saturday drop-in. It did, but it was kind of exciting because we heard this huge crack. And all of a sudden, our power went out. But it came back on. But it just we lost our transmission. You know that I love that sound when the, the power comes back on. It's like, yeah. and then you and it crack feels like it everything just comes back. It's like, oh no! For a oh second there, it's like I'm eating everybody in this room, and yeah. then like you know I'm gonna resort to cannibalism. Oh wow! And then like 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 half a second, then it comes back on. It's like, oh, why was I thinking about that? <laughs> <laughs> really went over the top. I'm not sure what happened. With that. So um, I've been playing that Pokemon Go. Okay. Uh, uh, and uh, I got to say that I got Pokemon me. You got Pokemon me? What does that mean? That means I actually walked too much. Th- and uh, catching Pokemon, and my knee really like gave out on me, and I, I think I sprained my knee. Like I, I would, I, like I would tell people, like I have a knee brace on underneath my pants. I take them off, but you know it's not that kind of show. Um, but very true. Uh, yeah, I was just walking around. I felt uh, then I felt a twinge in my knee. For some oh, reason, wow. I was just like, uh, like you know, two cars were gonna you know pull off 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 Main Street, and you're like trying to get on that one way, and I was like, oh, I'll just kind of like maybe do a short little jog, yeah. and then I maybe stepped on it just wrong, and I oh. felt a little twinge. And then I just kept walking on it, and Ooh. then it, and this this last week has been awful. Mm-hmm. So I got a knee brace just last night, and hopefully that'll help. And today Good. we're gonna be walking down to Karis Park. Uh, oh, for we out didn't tell lunch. any of the kids to bring money though. Oh, Let's I told them that we're going to Karis Park, and the parents. So you uh, told I, parents that? Yeah. Maybe let's do it Thursday. Oh yeah, we can't do that. Well, yeah. Never mind then. Well, All we're right, just right. gonna go. I mean, they, and like uh, the idea is like I told the parents is like this is just uh, like the whole point of this is just to go to a park, get outside. Okay. Um, if they want to buy something, they're more than welcome to. But, you know, we, that's not the um, the main goal of going out. It's just getting out because stop animation is an all indoor activity type it stuff. Is. It is an indoor activity and they get kind of burnt out. Yeah. So it's just good to bring them outside in the wild. And they got to catch them all. Yeah. So like down, like I just have to like wander around and play Pokemon Go with all the kids. And, just, and I'm just going to corral everyone. Me and Crystal <laughs> will be in the back like, watch out. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, I won't be that bad. I'm, I'm, I'm pretty good at about not doing um, time wasting activities too much. Okay. Most of the kids are self sufficient, so a lot of times we have to do things that entertain ourselves while the kids are uh, already entertained. Well, it's um, true. It, it kind of totally feels like a sweatshop of kids making stop animation films because <laughs> no, they just do it. No, they're just like make stop animation, <laughs> make it. Well, they get off task. <laughs> I don't know, whatever. They're fine. They're great kids. But of course, you can expect, uh, well, when we go out today, um, we, the weather is going to be maybe a little bit iffy today. It is currently 55 degrees outside. The high is going to be 71 degrees. Um, you have a 20% chance, 20 to 30% chance of isolated thunderstorms and scattered showers. Maybe we can probably just go on a Thursday, depending upon weather permission. We'll, get, we'll, like, we'll just stick our head out like this afternoon and be like, mm, okay, we can go or not idea. go. Yeah. Because, you know, the, last night it was weird. It was like a freak storm. It was. It was a freak storm last night. It was weird. But one funny thing about Scott and I is that we always seem to continue our conversations from before the show on our show. <laughs> so sorry we always talk logistics, but, I mean, <laughs> it's fun, right? Life yeah, it's, 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 it's ridiculous. <laughs> um, so, um, you know, like, already there's already, uh, uh, like... You know, with every new app that comes into play, like Pokemon Go and all this stuff, there was a, there's always all these like re, you know like there's rip off apps that come into play. You know, you have the Flappy Bird, yep. and then you have a uh, Flappin' Bird. <laughs> <laughs> but this one is more like you know you have Digimon, you have um, Pokemon Go, and my app would be called Digimon Went. <laughs> <laughs> and if you get that reference, yeah. then you're a '90s dork. Way to go, kids! Yeah. I never watched Digimon though. I thought Digimon was lame. Cause like we Digimon Pokemon, was amazing, but of course, and they cut, and they totally cut costs, just like showing half the episode of them, all the characters digivolving. What does that mean? What did they? They do evolve they into uh, bigger monsters that can fight. Oh, I remember that. And then they would turn back into their lower tier form when they just like, oh, I'm at energy. It's like, oh, you have to use the power of love to turn to you. Classic shows. The '90s had the best kid shows. Yeah, like '90s and early 2000s, awesome kid shows. Well, my uh, it was ridiculous because I I, I watched Yu-Gi-Oh. Yu-Gi-Oh! Oh my Remember god! That? Yes. So um, basically, the this whole guy's po- hair was on fire. Like this guy, big hair. Well, he had big hair for he, sure. His hair was like. Big spikes. Mm-hmm. I just thought it was. And weird. he was, and he's a uh, resurrection of uh, an Egyptian prince or something. And he had this like talisman on his neck, and he and when he'd yell, "You go!" and Yo, turn it, he turned into a hipster. And like basically, his pants 
turned became tighter. <laughs> that's that's the whole premise is that his clothes got tighter and um, he got more serious. That means it's going down. It that got means, real. Yeah, when it his pants real. get tight and his face gets serious. And it's like going the, the down. and yeah, it was it was it was a ridiculous series and. Um, you got to, and uh, my favorite line from there, you got to trust the heart of the cards. <laughs> the heart of the cards. The heart of the cards, man. It was like, you know what that's called? It's called chance. I remember when Pokemon cards and Digimon cards and you, you did they make Yu Gi Oh cards? No, yeah, it's nothing all but. all banned from school. Because they were, kids were training them, they were fighting over them, they were just distracting. But anybody who is anybody about the two uh, RPG card games, it's all about Magic, Magic. the Gathering. Magic. It's all about magic. Seriously, magic was it. I never played magic either, but I, that's what I always heard about yeah. among the nerds that magic was top. Yeah. I know that. All right, so <laughs> I, I did want to like have a nice, good start to the morning because the programming I'm about to show you is uh, <laughs> is about suicide. And suicide prevention, and talks about some of the statistics that, of course, Noel has mentioned many times before. Mm -hmm. So um, here's a little taste of what you guys can see new on MCAT tonight. And when we come back, we'll have events with Noel. We only have one full-time suicide prevention person in the state, and that's Carl Rostin. He's the um, works at the Montana Department of Public Health and Human Services. We are number one in suicide, um, and we have one full-time person working on this issue in the state. Um, I see that as being a major problem. Yes. My least favorite statistic um, in, as far as suicide and suicide prevention is that 85% of parents who lose a child to suicide had no idea that their child was suicidal. Um, and so we're really trying to pull in parents as well. And then there's a toolkit for senior living communities. And this is really something that we need to do more work on but we're just starting to kind of approach um, senior living places where, you know, as I mentioned before, the elderly who deal with chronic pain, loss of spouses, um, and undetected depression oftentimes struggle with suicide. So let's suicide. just take a, take a look at your fluid. Um, this activity is called Sharing Bodily Fluids. And so a, as you look at your fluid, anybody got concerns, thoughts? What are you thinking? I'm concerned. You're concerned, okay? <laughs> and for what reason are you concerned? It looks different than I expected. Uh, it, okay, okay. You didn't have any idea coming into this that, that was going to be the case, right? But now something's different. Okay, anybody else? Uh, you guys, that's what happens if you share bodily fluids. It looks different than what you expected. Don't do it. Okay, so after that... <laughs> hey, give me a <laughs> Well... Hello everyone, we've got some events. This is what's going on in your community on Wednesday today. So, uh, starting at 10 a.m. over at E3 Convergence Gallery, Bobby Almer has got an open studio. You can go in there and hang out between 10 and 1. You can ask questions, bring your project, or just hang out. It's open and free. Uh, over at Village Healthcare Center, they've got a blood drive. The blood mobile is gonna be out. Um, so 10 to 2.30, you can call 327 2045 or for an appointment. It's all day today. Taekwondo is going to be at the Children's Museum of Missoula starting at 11. Um, and then, you guys, so st this week from July 13th to July 16th is the International Choral Festival. So that is in Missoula. And um, so what it is, is it's out, it's choral tr music musicians from across the globe um, to come together to share their music and diverse cultural traditions. So there are choirs from places like Poland, Cuba, and Estonia, as well as some places around the United States and in Missoula. If you go to www.choralfestival.org, it'll give you the full schedule of events um, and where the, where the choirs are from and details and everything like that. So they're gonna be playing in various places around Missoula and around downtown um, for the next three days. Yeah. So just check out the website if you guys want to know more. Um, but the kickoff event is at Karis Park at Out to Lunch. It starts at 11 a.m. And so you'll hear some awesome choirs there. And then you'll be able to, you know, get some food or do some kids activities. Everything you can want. Also at 11 is Spectrum Discovery Area. And their discovery bench is geology. And their brain lab is Plastic Brains. Um, Spectrum Discovery Area also has their Science Sprouts, and uh, for today that is Geology, and Science Sprouts is a science education program for ages 2 to 5. 
Uh, over the Missoula Public Library, there's Kids Table at the library at 11.30, so they give you a free lunch if you're ages 18 and under, and they'll also do an activity at noon. And then over at the Public Library, we've got a couple more events going on over there. Um, they've got an art journal. Summer Studio is creating art journals. It starts at noon. You should bring one blank journal to class. Um, you can call 721-2665 to register. It's from noon to 2 today. And then over at the Big Sky High School, they're doing a Movies and Making, which features screenings of family-friendly films in their auditorium, um, by, followed by a craft, in the, craft activity in the library. Sweet. At the Missoula Public Library, they've got their afternoon matinee uh, that starts at 2 p.m. And you can give them a call to find out what movie it is. It usually doesn't say on here. And then we're still at the library for open hours in the makerspace starting at 3 until 6. You can go in there, work on a project of your choice, or learn how to use their equipment. And then at 3.30 is their middle school writers for grades 6 through 9. And then we're over at the Zootown Arts Community Center for the Glass Fusing Orientation class. So it's at 6 p.m. There is a fee, and uh, you also have to pay for glass. But after you do this, you can go in and use our glass uh, craft stuff anytime that you want to. That's pretty great. Over at Taste Buds Kitchen, they've got a sushi and dumpling cooking class. It starts at 6.30. It's $40 per person. And then uh, back at the Missoula Public Library, there is a Big Sky Beekeepers meeting that starts at 6.30. So if you are a beekeeper um, or just starting to be a beekeeper, you can go on to this and find out more information and connect with your beekeeping community. So they're going to be discussing honeybee biology and their common diseases with Cam Lay, who is a Montana State entomologist. Pretty sweet. And then we have got our Missoula City Band Summer Concert Series over in Bonner Park Bandshell. So it's at 6.30. Um, and so this will be a pre-concert special program just uh, prior to the Missoula International Choral Festival Youth Choir Evening Concert. Mm. Um, I know that was a that was a big word, which I don't know if I've got it on here, but you guys can I can talk about it a little bit. Okay. Yeah. I was in that youth choir. Tell us about back it. Back when I was a youth. Tell us about it. So when I was a youth. Um, uh, I did the International Choir Festival um, one year because it happens every three years oh. and um, I was only old enough to do it for once and I was uh, I was 18 at the time but of course before that I wasn't in the choir that much and it happens every three years and if you become 21 you're you aged out basically mm -hmm. they just don't want to like have a 21 year old with a bunch of teenagers yeah it's like hey, you can buy a spear and, <laughs> anyways but it, the whole point is that uh, they come together and then make for a week or two they practice um, music as the Missoula Youth Choir and then they perform at various venues around town the the church that's on Trenton Street I forget what the church St. Anthony Parish I believe yes that's one of the many places that the International Choir Festivals are going to be going on and um um, they're going to do a big thing happening today at the at Karis Park. Nice, they, they, they always yeah. do it at Karis Park. The international um, um, peoples, the international choirs from all over the globe come down here. And this happens once every three years. Mm -hmm. So it's like a triannual. Yeah, so or, it's a big deal. It's going to be for the next three mm -hmm. days. It's going to be everywhere. So check it out, you guys. It's going to be really cool. And so buttons, you have to buy buttons. They're at places around, various places around, yeah. like... Orange Street and Food Farm and the Good Food Store, but they're only twenty bucks, and it'll get you into everything. Is, is there a website? I, yeah, I, I believe. Um, yeah, the international here. I'll look it up for you guys. Yeah, it's the International Coral Festival. So I'll talk a little bit more about this. Um, so a lot of people are always wondering, is like, why is it more frequent? It's like they need money for it. So if yeah. you want to donate, you can log into the website um, coralfestival.org. Yeah, and it's a nice little website um, right here. And it's nice, and it ha basically starts uh, today. Yeah. And it ends on the 16th. So we have, and it has great, and you have a whole list of what's going on and who's doing it. There's uh, groups from Korea. Mm -hmm. I believe there's one from China, and there's always that one group from Sweden. There's a group from Poland as well as Cuba and Estonia. Yeah. Yeah. Because when the, the, the when the like um, when the uh, girls choir from Sweden come down, it's like oh my god. <laughs> but now I'm like too old because they're like teenagers, like little little kids. But back when I was in high school, it was like oh. It but now it's just like now it's like now I'm just too old for that. Yeah. Um, and like I haven't seen so many um, white hair, white white faced, uh, blue eyed, blonde haired people in my life in yeah, one I'm place. Yeah, sure. They're, I'm they're sure. like all just one. That Aryan race, Ugh. <laughs> <It's> scary. <laughs> <laughs> no. Aryan race. Terrifying. <laughs> <laughs> I even know what Aryan comes from. It's like the air. 
I don't know. It's like pop from the air. I think so. There's like, yeah. hold on a second, and they're like balloons. So you just tie them down to the earth. And just make you blonde hair and blue eyes. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, the, and then there's always that one person who dyes their hair. There's always one girl in that group that really stands out because they dye their hair. <laughs> <laughs> Put on bronzer. Like it, it happens every three years. So I suggest you guys look for that. And they yeah. usually perform at the Karis Park. Yep. So to, like I mentioned earlier, uh, Out to Lunch is their kickoff, and so they'll be at Out to Lunch today. And like I said, like if you want it more frequently and if you want to get uh, more involved. They're always looking for volunteers and people to house a lot of the international um, students or international choirs as well. But of course, it's too late now because it's happening today. They already have every room that they're going to need. Um, you can go on to choralfestival.org and you can donate there. I'm a huge uh, proponent for this, and it, it would be great if this happened every year, but we don't have the infrastructure or the funding behind it to happen every year. And it's it's a big ordeal, and um, I just want to give a shout out to all the people involved with it. Yeah, way to go, you guys. We can't wait to see what you guys have in store. All right. Okay, so we're moving on. <laughs> I always press the wrong buttons. Okay, so we've got a couple more events for today, and then we're going to switch gears over to ASAP segment. So over at the Sunrise Saloon, we have country dance lessons with instructor Kathy Clark. It starts at 7, it's only $5 per lesson, and she's going to teach you how to square dance and do all these western swing dances. It's pretty sweet. Uh, and then over at the Wilma is Kim Cock and Jerry Joseph. It starts at 7. There's an open mic at the Old Beck VFW at 8. Uh, karaoke at the Eagles Lodge at 8.30. There is karaoke at the Sunrise at 9. Um, karaoke at the Bad Learner at 9. And then Milk Crate Wednesday at the Palace, also at 9. So that's what I've got going on for you guys. Uh, we're switching gears now. We're going to, over to Musical Notes with Asaf Adonai. Z-Plane! Z-Plane! <laughs> that classic, iconic line came from our guest on today's Musical Notes when his boss... Mr. Rourke would always tell the employees who worked on the island, smiles everyone, smiles. When the plane would fly toward the island with the guests paying $50,000 a person for a three day stay on Fantasy Island. And our guest, here he is, our guest is Hervé Jean-Pierre Villachez, known to the world as Hervé Villachez Tattoo. <laughs> <laughs> on the ABC television show Fantasy Island, and there he is. And let's show him in action with that video first of all. Now we see the plane is heading toward Fantasy Island. There's Tattoo ringing a bell with his classic line pointing up the plane, the plane. <coughs> and that's how the series always started with uh, Hervé up in this little house. And as you see the names of the movie stars from the past, obviously. Then Mr. Rourke would come out and Tattoo would come out and they'd do a few little acting thing for a moment and then they introduce the guest and that's how the series always started. Here he is coming out of the house there. Oh. Well, we must have lost it, but that's okay. <laughs> anyway, um, tell you a little bit about our guest. And by the way, uh, your audience might know, I actually met him in real life. I wow. met him when I was 20 years old. Cool. Yeah, it was interesting. Hey, Sam, how are you? You know, he had that voice, you know, but... It was for a little event that they had going on at the time, and I was doing the music for it. He was the guest. So nice. That's pretty cool. He, he stands at 3 feet 10. His name is Hervé Villachez. He was a French actor and a painter of English and Filipino descent, and he achieved worldwide recognition for two of his most iconic roles, one as the henchman, Nick Knack, on the James Bond film, The Man with the Golden Gun in 1974 with Roger Moore, he played the henchman with uh, Christopher Lee, the other bad guy of the film. And of course, his more iconic role, which he earned $3 million playing Tattoo on Fantasy Island from 1978 to 1984. And every week, they always had that classic Z playing line. Here he is with Ricardo Montalban, who played Mr. Rourke on this series. And basically, the synopsis of the show people would have fantasies and Mr. Rourke would make their dreams come true when they would come on a three-day stay at the island because he had like this mysterious powers that he could always do things. But the show centered more around Tattoo because of his charm and charisma during the series. And finally, Villachez was born in Nazi-occupied Paris in 1943 during World War II. And he was bullied because of his condition they called it um, proportionate dwarfism at that time due to an endocrine um, disorder. And so his 
internal organs were normal sized even though he was trapped in that little body. So he was always in pain and suffering. Now you wouldn't know it when you see him in his films, but he was always in pain. Even when I met him, he, he, you could tell he was suffering. But um, he had a wife and had a son. And also, he's the first person at the age of 16 to ever have his artwork displayed in Paris, at the Museum of Paris. He left in 64 to enter the United States doing painting and off-Broadway works, and he went on to hit his stride with The Man with the Golden Gun and, of course, Fantasy Island. He appeared in Different Strokes with Gary Coleman, Taxi with Judd Hirsch. He was in the 1980 movie Forbidden Zone and in the sequel Airplane 2. So <laughs> those were just a diverse um, acting roles that they gave him because of his stature in real life. He played Rumpelstiltskin in the um, fairy tale theater version, and he also played Oscar the Grouch in a trash can with his feet sticking up upside down. So <laughs> his final appearance was in the Ben Stiller show, and he was very popular during the 80s in France for his imitations of. Prime Minister Philippe Gonzalez. <laughs> so, yeah, this guy, in the short years that he was here on the earth, he brought a lot of joy to people and a lot of different characters, even though he was in such physical pain. So, I think the world will remember him most as little tattoo on Fantasy Island, and that's how I'm going to end this. <laughs> Thanks, Asaph. Thank sure. you very much, Asaph. <laughs> Cute little tattoo. Mm -hmm. Hey, Noel. Yeah, Scott. Do you like piano? I love piano. Well, we have a special um, video from um, Celebrating Piano tomorrow night at 10 p.m. Wow. And I would, I would like to share it with uh, some of you at home. So, here it is. are great okay so now we are moving on to um, this is what's going on in your community tomorrow on Thursday so starting at 10 a.m. over at the Providence Center is our NAMI Missoula weekly meeting it's a free weekly meeting for anyone affected by mental illness or interested in learning about NAMI over at spectrum discovery area the discovery bench is slime and the brain lab are neurons over in Frenchtown Pond State Park, they're having paddleboard lessons. It starts at 11 a.m., so it's 11 to 12.30, and then 1 to 2.30. It's $45. Um, they provide all the equipment. You just come for the fun. So 529-5613. All right. And then over at the Children's Museum of Missoula, there's an art series from 11 to 11.30. They'll learn a bit of art history and then do an art activity. At the Historical Museum at Fort Missoula, there's kids' activities going on. So from 11 to 12 and then 3 to 4 all summer long, there'll be a different theme and an activity that all kids of ages will enjoy, or kids of all ages will enjoy, you know. Uh, over at the Missoula Public Library, we've got a couple of things going on. There is an acoustic guitar club at Basics for Beginners. It starts at noon. Call 721-2665 for more information and to register for that. Um, and then also at the public library, 
Uh, they are participating in the choir crawl, which will be individual choirs from around the world will perform in 15 to 20 minute time slots in various locations downtown. So some will be at the Missoula Public Library and then others will be in downtown. Um, and you guys can look at the choralfestival.org for more information, more schedules and stuff. Um, but this will be in the large meeting room from 1 to 5.30. Um, and then there is a pop-up adventure playground. So there's at one, this is put on by the Children's Museum of Missoula, and they're gonna be in Sacagawea Park. So that's from one to three, yeah. Um, and then over at, uh, we've got our NAMI Missoula Connection Support Group. It starts at 1.30. This is on Brook Street, and this is a free weekly support group for adults living with mental illness. Over at the Missoula Butterfly House, they are going to be making garden hotels for beneficial species. It starts at three. And so they're gonna learn about some beneficial species in their backyard and some ways that we can keep them around each spring. That's cute. Uh, over at the Missoula Fencing Association, they've got a little pirate's fencing class. It starts at three. It's for ages six to eight. Um, and it'll meet Thursdays from 3.15 to four for six weeks. So to register, you can go to missoulafencing.net. Lego Club is at the Missoula Public Library at 3.30. And then uh, we've got a wine tasting at 5 down at La Grada Bella. Uh, they have a minimum of four wines and a different theme each week, and it's only cost $12.50. Uh, and then over at Karis Park, we've got downtown tonight. The Bent Bones would be playing. It starts at 5.30. Bent um, Bones, really? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Bent Bones. Oh, can I um, give us a plug? Just one more plug. Yes, one more plug. Okay, so um, at 4.45 tomorrow on MCAT, um, we have our live cut-in of our uh, stop animation um, camp. Yeah, so we totally do. We gave you a little update about what's going on here with our stop animation this week. We show some stop animation videos. I actually have a stop animation video for later in, uh, for to, at the end of the show. I'll show you that a little bit later. Um, but I just wanted to mention that um, our Tuesday didn't really work out because we had that thunderstorm and the power went out. It was like, oh, we're not live yeah. anymore. Yeah. And um, yeah, I just wanted to give a little plug to us about our little live cut because the kids get to host the show and they ask each other questions about their stop animated videos. And they do such a good job and they're so cute. Yeah. They did, they did a great job yesterday. And then our power went out. But that's okay. Yeah, it was, it was just getting the good part because yeah. usually the first five minutes was like, okay. Hi. Great. But they were really good. I was surprised. I was like watching. I was like, wow, these kids are doing way better. Yeah. Like, so good. They did a great job. They're all super comfortable and super chill. But I think it's because they're all like returners and all yeah. kids I've, uh, I've worked with. And they, they have experience on, on yeah. camera. They we've had before and they all have experience on camera. So they're all comfortable with us too. So yeah. They and had a lot of fun. I mean, like, well, the first thing a kid does when they see themselves on camera is like, like, like whoa, look at me, I'm on camera. Yeah. <laughs> like, they didn't do that. They were just on task, talking to each other, having a nice little conversation. And I'm, like, really impressed with their professionality of how... I was, too. They, I mean, we've got some really awesome kids that come through our summer camps. We've got some bad apples, some here and there. Yeah. But for the most part, they're really good, smart kids yeah. that listen. I'm definitely them. excited for our, the the rest of the, the next two weeks for sure. It we should do. be great. It'll be All right. Yes. Okay. Moving on now. Okay. So over at Zootown Arts Community Center, they've got a color mixing class it's called Summer Blooms. It's a five week class that'll strengthen your confidence in your color a palette, achieving the color you desire. Um, and so what they want to do is they want you to learn how to mix a wide variety of colors from a limited palette of only 11 colors. So by the end of the class, you'll be able to mix colors with confidence, which I think that's great. And if you're an artist, as I know, I'm not an artist, but my artist friends tell me that you always have to mix colors. You can never put like just one, like if it's a blue, you can't just throw blue on there. You have to mix it with something else. So this will help you with your art. That sounds great. You yeah. can always be an artiste. Artiste. What's the difference? Uh, infinity scarf. <laughs> ah, <laughs> that's right. Okay, well, I'm gonna give. I have one. Cool, I'll just wear it. Yeah, just wear it and be all like pompous. Oh, my favorite. Like, there's a beautiful installation at this one art gallery and the name drop. You do a lot of name dropping. Lots of name dropping. Who's yeah. Art Museum? You don't even have to draw Museum anything and no. you can be an artiste. Mm -hmm. Great, thanks, yeah. Matt. <laughs> okay, over at Free Cycles Missoula, they have got a thing called Building the Baja Divide. And so they're talking about the rewards and challenges of bicycle touring in Baja. Cool, Baja, California, I would think, I don't know. Uh, and then we've got some music for tonight. Tomorrow night, this is tomorrow night. Music for tomorrow night. Highway 93 band is going to be playing at Sunrise Saloon at 8. So open mic at the Eagles Lodge at 8.30. Open mic at the Broadway at 9. Open uh, Dead Hipster with Badlander at 9. 
Karaoke the Dark Horse at 9. Uh, Eat Strike is going to be playing at the BFW at 9 o'clock. And then Ted Ness and the Rusty Nails will be playing the Top Hat Lounge at 9.30. So you guys, as always, check out MissoulaEvents.net, University of Montana, um, the Independent and the Missoulian for more info on events in your community. But also, if you want to find out more information about uh, Wake Missoula, you can log on to our website, wakeofmissoula.wix.com slash wakeofmissoula. It's nice. We made you write it out twice. You could like us on our Facebook page. You could follow us on Twitter at Wake Up Missoula. Missoula Community Access Television. Also, as a Twitter, you could check us out at uh, MCAT TV Missoula. <laughs> we have a Facebook page. You can like us there. And find out more information, MCAT.org. Yep. Um, of course, uh, yeah, no, no, no. Uh, never mind. No, no. Okay. Yeah. Of course, yeah. Monday was our city council meeting uh, determining the fate of the Merc. Oh, I have a little... Uh, okay, so, so I just have a little bit to talk about. Okay. I don't have anything to show you guys because uh, they were supposed to talk about the um, the demolition um, uh, idea. Like, they, the, the idea of demolition. It, it, the whole it, the point of this meeting was to basically talk about the uh, the plans that they just like, should we permit the demolition permit mm -hmm. to be permitted into mm -hmm. this uh, in the future? So it's, it's yeah. another step of millions of other steps that would be forwarded. And um, they had a whole bunch of public comment, which was actually completely unnecessary because the first thing that was said by one of the committee members, which by the council members was like, oh, we're just gonna throw this back to committee. Huh. And so they, then they spent two hours of just like public commenting on the Missoula Mercantile when it was completely unnecessary um, because they threw it back to committee. That's ridiculous. Because this, yeah, it, like when they say you're going to throw it back to committee, then they're going to talk about it more heavily mm -hmm. in the committee meetings, which happens Wednesdays, and it's during the land use and planning meeting. So if you're interested in um, talking about the Merck um, even more, you can go to the land use and planning meeting. You can log on to ci.missoula.mt.us, or you can Google City of Missoula and go to the government webpage to find out more meetings and more. Yep. But um, I have a... I have a we have an oh. <laughs> Okay, you guys, we've got an art clip. This is Field Notes. This is at the Missoula Art Museum. And it lasts until, you know, it doesn't. Oh, October. and it's October 1st. You guys, we have several months to check this out. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, we got down with yeah. them. So here's a cute little art clip. <laughs> You guys, it's Wednesday, and you know what all you know what that means, right? No, not really. But um, let's play Hallmark or Bullmark. <laughs> <laughs> Are right, you guys ready to play? Yes. So I read a synopsis from a Hallmark original movie, or do I? And you guys have to determine whether it's a real or it's Bullmark. Hence the name Hallmark or Bullmark. All right, guys, ready to play? <laughs> Hit it ASAP. Nancy Jenkins is a spunky, driven, independent woman living alone in the big city. Fed up with the dating scene there, she takes a ferry to a smaller island where she meets the rugged Max Davis. A do-it-yourself kind of guy. For Nancy, it's love at first sight. But does Max feel the same way? Will Nancy get the man she's 
always been looking for before July's end. <laughs> and this movie is called About Last July. <laughs> oh, Nancy Jenkins. So obviously from the synopsis, it is like About Last July. She doesn't get him, but she might get him after July. Oh, I hope so. Okay. But it is... About Last July. About Last July. Is this a Hallmark original movie or is this something I made up? Hmm. Okay, let's see. What do I think? I'm gonna say Hallmark. Let's say it's yeah, nice I'm Hallmark. Agree too. You agree? Okay. Hey, Scott, what is it? It's Bullmark. Oh! I completely made it up. It was a super vague. Well, it, it sounded, was vague. It, it could have been real. I yeah, suppose. it sounds like a good one. She goes to the smaller islands where she meets Max Davis. <laughs> I'll go to the Hamptons. A do it yourself well, kind of guy. Do it yourself kind of guy. Oh, <laughs> darn it! Okay. Alright, guys, we're gonna play round two of Hallmark and Bullmark. <laughs> should, I just, should I just talk like this all the time? <laughs> Do this voice. Gotta catch them Pokemon. Pokemon, go, go, guy. <laughs> <laughs> Enough about that. Let's do this. Yes, I'm waiting. Okay. <laughs> Carrie is head chef at one of the biggest restaurants in Las Vegas. And only high rollers get a chance to take part in Carrie's gourmet delights. When his family farm is in its fifth consecutive drought in years. He must leave the city of Sin for his wholesome family farm. <laughs> After five generations, Carrie must find a way to save the family, his family legacy. And with a little help from former high school flame, Samantha, Carrie might find a way to win the jackpot. And this movie is called Bet the Farm. <laughs> it's terrible. <laughs> well, it's like, you know, you have the settings in Vegas, and then there's a farm, and, and it's like, you know, and that's the same, it's about the farm. I'm gonna, I, you know what, I'm gonna say a hallmark on this one, too. Yeah, me too. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Like... I, I'm, yeah, that's really? I'm feeling it. I'm a mm. dub's hallmark. Well, you can't be right all the time, and you guys aren't right this it's time. It's bullmark It again? is complete bullmark. No! <laughs> yeah. Gosh, Scott! Oh, These are all complete bullmark. And Lori's probably sitting there and just like, eh, 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 I can guess every time. I'm Lori. <laughs> like, she tells me every single she told me the other day. It's like, I can always get the hallmark. <laughs> Lori knows. Yeah. Whatever. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe she did. Maybe she didn't. I don't know. Gosh, you're good, Scott. <laughs> All right, well. Oh, I just it just came to me. Like yesterday, I was just like hanging out, just like you know, I walked into work early in yeah. the morning and whatnot. Because usually in the early in the morning, my knee is not as bad. Usually later in the afternoon, my knee's like awful. When I was walking home last night, it was like oh, and then it made me desperate to go to um, Walmart and just get a knee brace. <laughs> Walmart, get your knee brace there. Yeah. It's like the worst like yeah. or whatever. But you know, cheap knee brace. You yeah, know, just something to support my knee. Mm -hmm. And I, oh, it feels like. And then when I sit down, it's like it kind of like makes my knee feel weird. I wonder what happened. You, yeah, you just like I got Pokemon it. knee. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I just call it Pokemon knee. It's like tennis elbow. Yeah, it's not a real injury. No, no it's Pokemon knee. <laughs> yeah, man, you stumped us again. Well, you guys can also play homework and bullmark on our website. Yes. Yes. But we do have this really great video that one of our summer camp kids, his name is Skyler, yep. he made. It took him about two days. It's over a thousand frames long. And it is, oh, a little less than a minute. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But it was totally worth it. Yeah, it's, it's awesome. awesome. But I don't want to talk about it anymore. Here it is right now. <laughs>
super cool. Yeah. That's awesome. And Way that's, to go, Skylar. And of course, our big live show is happening this Friday at 5 p.m. We'll talk a little bit more about it. And yep. then we'll have a cut in with a bunch of other little short animated shorts that the kids have made um, maybe today or maybe tomorrow. Um, I, said, I did tell them that we might do some live action stuff, but today is mostly kind of like, I think today we're going to try to do more goofing off and going going out, getting out of MCAT. Because I know idea. that it, it gets really stuffy in here and... It, it give him a chance to get some culture, especially during the International Choir Festival. It's true. Just one more plug for the International Choir Festival. Um, it starts today, and it's going on all day, so look, mm -hmm. uh, check the uh, choralfest.org, where mm -hmm. you can find out all your information about where they're going to be performing, who's going to be performing, and what country they're from. Yeah. It's great. It happens once every three years. So and now it's time to get out there and check it out, you guys. It's going to be awesome. Is so there, like I said, the kickoff is at Karis Park this morning at yeah. 11. Is there yeah. anything else uh, I forgot to mention? No, I don't think so. I think we got oh, everything uh, Wait, wait, wait. Today is our orientation. Yes, orientation. 5.30. Um, at 5.30 tonight at MCAT, mm -hmm. um, we have orientation for any new prospective um, television producers yep. on our channel. So yeah. if you are uh, somebody who wants to pick up a new skill when it comes to video, editing, um, lighting, uh, just basic camera work, and um, you know, just kind of getting a foot in the door, and then you can use this as a real skill building mechanism to work in like maybe a couple news stations here and there. Just, yeah. just work your way up, but it's a good starting point, and we rinse out equipment to people like lights and cameras, and it's Projector. all HD, it's really sweet. A lot of the stuff that we make here is really sweet. Um, so yeah, um, we also do our summer camps too, which is awesome for kids to get a nice start in uh, film, and yeah. video, and stop animation. Mm -hmm. But that's enough plug-in for MCAT. Um, if you're interested in being on our show and talking about an upcoming event, cause, or rally uh, concert, you can call us at 542-6228, otherwise known as 542-MCAT. You can also email us MCAT at MCAT.org. Yeah. So thanks for tuning in, you guys, for Wake Up Missoula. My name is Noelle McAvoy. And I'm Scott Ramp. Here's ASAP Adonai.